Good morning. Today, I forgot and almost called myself a learned friend. But I will humble myself, because if I am asked to quote the Constitution and Articles, as they will do, I might have to be stripped of that particular title, and I will remain a host. However, for the sake of you and I, I'm here to give us legal perspectives on homeschooling, because I'm seeing stories highlighted about cruel parents putting certain kind of energy on their children because they are overwhelmed, because there's exploitation by head of schools. There is about 1.7 billion shillings that was, of course, given to schools. The government said, let children go to school. Do not send children back home for fees, all these things. We've had parents commit suicide because they can't raise money for school fees. We've had COVID-19 causing sudden and definite closure of schools, so parents are not sure when students are going to go back or if they should go back. Their parents are just panicking about COVID-19. And they're thinking, why not just homeschool my child? All right? Is this the only option we have? What if this is the only option? What if this is where the pandemic is pushing us? Where do we stand as a country when it comes to homeschooling? Is it legal? And if it isn't, what next? I had a story that was highlighted about a 45-year-old parent somewhere in one of the counties who was arrested just the other day because they say their minor had overstayed at home and wasn't registered into, his, into the Form 1 uh, you know, section or secondary school. And we are wondering how many of parents, how many of the parents watching this morning are viable to an arrest or criminal offense for keeping their children in the house because they can't afford school fees. Talk to me on our comment section on KUTV Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on set, my advocates, allow me to call you that this morning, advocates of the High Court of Kenya. On my far right um, is Mr. Isaac Okinyo, who is also an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and practicing with Okinyo and co-advocates. Karibu Akili, please introduce yourself officially and let the viewers, um, of course, um, engage with you or resonate with you at your level. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Um, my name is Okinyo Isaac and practicing advocate of the High Court of Kenya, the firm of uh, Okinyo and Associates Advocates. I'm really honored to be here with you today. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. And of course, uh, in my immediate right, um, Elvis, Mr. Elvis, thank you so much for being here. Please introduce yourself. Um, <coughs> my, sorry, my name is, uh, look at you. <laughs> my name is Dr. Elvis Abenga. I am an advocate uh, practicing at Begis Law Offices and Chambers. I have been in the homeschooling space for quite, quite a while. I myself am a product of homeschooling and I have... Uh, represented a couple of clients in court uh, with regards to homeschooling issues. So it's really a pleasure being here. Wow. There you have it. Yes. Now, we, I, was, I was wondering where, how, how would I train my son through homeschooling and still have him compete? with the rest of the citizens, and today you're here. And let me just start with you, uh, of course, as we continue to delve deeper into some of the concerns that are being raised by the public. Uh, how was it, you know, um, how was your experience homeschooling as a child? How was your transition? Before we even talk about your clients and their situations. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, my experience was OK, I would say. Uh, uh, how I ended up uh, doing homeschooling was, uh, it's, it's a long story, but yeah. I would say that it was a good experience, uh, all the same. I did not feel any different in terms of uh, moving from now primary education to high school, when now I actually went to school, like in the, in the sense of it going to a high school. Mm. Yeah, and I found that I, I think I integrated well because uh, one of the things that people tell you about homeschooling is that your child will not have social skills, will not uh, know how to interact with others, but you realize that uh, what, like for me, what my parents ensured is that I still had interaction with other children okay. um, through other forums, like especially church and you know, many other ways of integrating with other people. So I would just go to go and do schooling mm -hmm. uh, at home and then uh, move on. I don't know if this is the right time to, to say it, mm -hmm. but um, 
uh, my learned colleague who just passed, who, who was here earlier on, yeah. mentioned about a section in the Basic Education Act, Act yes. that uh, says a person or an institution shall not carry out basic education unless accredited for it. Yes. So uh, I have been able to represent uh, a couple of parents who've been arrested because of homeschooling. Right now I'm in, engaged in a constitutional petition that's at the High Court. Okay. Where the High Court actually stayed uh, prosecution of a parent who had been arrested because of uh, allegedly violating the Basic Education Act. And the thing is, uh, when you say a person shall not carry out basic education, what that simply means, it means that a parent has the option of doing basic education using an, a person who's accredited, for instance, mm. a licensed teacher. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to come to that in yeah. detail. Uh, and of course, when you talk about having that licensed teacher, we'll figure out um, after having them the transition as well. Yes. Because you can have them and then yeah. transition in a kwashida kidogo. Yeah. Let me come to uh, Mr. Isaac Okino. And now that we're talking about having him here say it was okay for him, I want Kenyans to start from the basics. What are the rights to education? Real quick, because there are parents like the one I mentioned who was arrested in the regard of you have denied this child 100% transition. You have denied this child the right to education. This is a child who is supposed to go to Form 1. However, the government has arrested him on the basis of you have denied this child the rights to education. Which are these rights to education clearly stated in the Constitution as at now? You see now, the right to, there's the right to the basic education okay and this right is not is not like uh, it's not absolute you can be edu you, you, you can really want this right to education but there are some limiting factors of course mm -hmm. but the government has been constantly implementing we have had so many basic we have had so many education forums starting with the, the in 1965 there was a I can't recall the name, there, but there was a task force that was uh, that was formed mm -hmm. specifically to uh, look at the rights of education. You see, specifically what was implemented. If I just go back to history, what uh, when the NAC government came mm -hmm. to power, that was in 2002, was to implement all those task force implementation about education. From 2003 to 2008 when the NAC government had served its first term mm -hmm. <coughs> primary there was a the, the then president declared free compulsory primary education mm -hmm. as at this time you could not keep a people or rather a child at home while he could access free mm -hmm. primary mm -hmm. education then at the with, with the second term of the of the, the uh, President Mwai Kibaki, he introduced free secondary day education. All right, day. Yes. That's very clear. Yeah. Okay. Now, as at this stage, every child has uh, had that right to access free day primary education. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to my point where I said it's not absolute, if Let's say you have passed well and you cannot access this high institution of the, the, the high institution, uh, the institution of higher learning. Mm. You can still enroll yourself to a day school, okay. which is absolutely free. Okay. And that's where the government now comes in when a parent, a, a parent fail to take the child to school. I hope, okay. I hope I'm clear there. All right. Because okay. the right to education up to secondary school is absolutely free but the limiting factor is if you insist like your child got 400 you don't have anything in the house but you still insist like that this child must be admitted to alliance high school which has its own budget your child cannot learn there without the budget there's food there are those expenses there's the boarding fee, fee. Mm. you cannot insist on your child going to alliance and you, you don't have these funds oh, okay okay to support your child all right. Alternatively, your child can enroll to a day school, which is compulsory, which is free 
compulsory. The government pays for it. Mm. I, all right, what I'm getting here is actually very clear state, clearly stated. However, my concern is, therefore, these are the, these are the basic rights to education. However, as a parent, and I, 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 I don't want to... Maybe the schools are full. I've had situations of people saying schools are full. You know, schools are full. And I also can't afford alliance, you know? So how am I infringing on this particular child's rights by keeping them at home and doing the homeschooling? with the accredited person maybe but how then would i why how am i infringing on their rights when I, if i am homeschooling them when the schools are full number one number two i can't afford the alliance i'll come back um i come back to to you on that uh dr elvis how would this be and also what actions do i take how does a parent uh then start you know how do you how do you engage with the police on the onset because there's a matter of you are resisting you were trying to explain too much. You know how the police can be. How number one, how am I infringing on their rights? Number two, how can what how what is the first thing a parent should do when they're in this situation of being accused of infringing this child's rights based on what Mr. Isaac has said? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll say first and foremost, the 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 ground has shifted mm -hmm. quite a bit, especially during COVID. If you notice when COVID hit last year, that's 2020. Uh, schools were closed and actually the government uh, there is an official ministry circular that was sent out yes. to encourage parents to continue with the education at home okay so the ground has really shifted and even right now as uh, parents are going back as schools have reopened and all that we still have parents who believe that taking the child to school at this time might be hazardous to their health because COVID is still here. Okay. So in such situations, uh, you'd not say that now this parent is infringing on the right of the child because just as my learned colleague said, all it, this the right to education is not absolute. It's not uh, that we have very few absolute rights in the constitution. It's always weighed against other rights. I've also seen parents who, for whatever reason, for instance, religious reasons, okay. uh, believe that their child is not getting proper training and they would want to closely monitor what the child is learning and then they opt to, to homeschool. Now, on your second question about how do you interact with the police when, when someone walks in and says, uh, I had a client uh, who was actually reported by a neighbor that they are, they are homeschooling uh, that we've seen we've never seen this child going to school okay what is happening here and then of course the police just swarmed in with children officers uh, one moment the first thing i always i'll advise anyone when you're interacting with the police is cooperate do not resist go to the police station you have a right to remain silent of course let them prove their case but i've seen uh, it usually very uh, it, work, it works well when you go with your curriculum, you go with your mm -hmm. progress report, you go with your timetable. Did the police give you time to gather those things? Yes, okay. actually, because you will, you'll be asked to write a statement. Okay. And when you're writing your statement with the investigating officer, when you carry all this and you keep copies of them, you give the police copies of all this, and you will, they will see that, you know, the the child is actually learning and especially when when it comes to matters of children education the police do not so are not so much mm. involved as are the children officers the children officers uh, are the ones who usually are the ones you need to convince that this child is actually going through proper schooling yeah. so once you carry all this evidence and now nowadays the government ha has relaxed uh, the standards, not not standards, but the re formal strict requirement of mm. going to school mm. and saying that if you are going to go through a homeschooling program, the curriculum itself must be accredited and licensed. The person giving the education must be accredited or licensed. So when you carry some of these, you carry a copy of the curriculum, you carry uh, whoever is doing it uh, has is licensed for that, and you table and the child is interviewed and the child is just okay, All right. you'll almost just be fine. 
All right, I yeah. hope that was very, very clear. I'm coming back to Mr. Isaac. I know you are really supporting your learned friend. And uh, somebody saying, well, these are the things I will show the police that this is what I'm doing and it is in, in line with what the curricula is for the country. But somebody is asking, are there other legal documents that I should have uh, as a mwana inchi, as a parent, just in case things go sour? Some legal documents besides the curricula just to show, well, this is evidently what I'm doing. Are there certain documents that these people should have in place as they consider homeschooling? Legal documents? You see, b before I go to your question, yes. homeschooling must be considered in the in a bigger uh, in a in the bigger picture. Okay. L l let us assume an employee of uh, an international organization has a contract with uh, here in Kenya for like uh, four five years. Is required to shift with the family. The children were learning. A different curriculum mm -hmm. different from what is taught in the school mm -hmm. in, in, in in Kenya okay these children the Constitution uh, article 53 says that the, the a children has a basic right to education these children after five years they'll go back to their country where they'll go back to the curriculum that is yes. being taught in their country mm -hmm. Now, should we deny these children the right to education here? Should we enroll them to our local <laughs> curriculum? Mm. Then after five years, again, they go back to their own curriculum, in their curriculum where, where, where they were. Mm. These are the questions that we need to address. when we, It's a bigger picture when you look at the issue to do with homeschooling. Mm. It is not just restrained to Kenyans who okay. really want to. Uh, to to do the homeschooling issue all right we have foreigners we have people and the right to education is, is, is the, the right to basic education is actually it, it's a right and article 26 talks about discrimination mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we cannot discriminate against these children so that they they do the the, the Kenyan system mm. Whereas they are not going to benefit because they are only here for like four years. They go back to their country. They need to grow. Right. Education is all about growth. Yes, yes. Th th that I think should be, we, we, the government should look at the bigger picture while trying to address the right to education. I like when you talk about growth and we have to also acknowledge how Kenya has, uh, you know, uh, moved from the 844 curricula to the now CBC, which is trying to embrace a lot more things that parents have been saying. I want my child to uh, exercise their talents. I want my child to be free. I want my child to grow in some biblical way or some way re religiously. I want to come to uh, Dr. Elvis and this is on the transition. Now that you're here, we had something highlighted in the standard newspaper of top students speak TVET courses as 465,000 765 can't be accounted for. We're seeing a very big gap here. There's a lot of uh, a capacity of a, a total of 475,385, yet only 271,762 students have been placed. Now I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm asking myself, um, is there a place for children who have been homeschooled here? Are, are they even part of these numbers here? Um, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, how is the transition for children who are homeschooled into the curriculum, into the system of education? And are there some biasness when we come to you know, placements like this for them? And how was your experience in the same light? Okay, thank you. So uh, I would say uh, the major difference there is on the curriculum that is used okay. to homeschool. We have parents who decide to still, now like for, for me, I was doing the 844 system and my parents still decided to homeschool me uh, for a period of time using that same curriculum. So what that meant is that I sat the same examination uh, as someone else who went through uh, classroom schooling. Okay. And when, when you're talking about placement, what really gu guides the government a lot is the grades that someone gets. So at that point when someone has uh, gotten an A from a homeschooling curriculum and another person who's gotten the same A from a classroom curriculum, you'd find that there will be no difference at that point okay. when it comes to 
to the placement because at that time the the, the government barely, especially at high school level, they barely look at which school someone went through. They would just All look right. at the grades that you got, what you applied, do you qualify for the courses you applied for okay. and place you for that. Now, where there gets to be a problem is if someone has gone through a homeschooling curriculum that's maybe a foreign homeschooling, maybe it is accredited, but then it's, it's still foreign in nature and maybe done foreign examinations for that. Uh, because there are some homeschooling curriculum. That yeah, there's is, British, there's yeah, American, there's yes. the, yeah. Yeah. Then at that point, coming to apply for placement in Kenya, in Kenyan universities by the placement authority, then definitely that would be a problem. Mm. You'd find most of such students end up still in the universities, but either as private, mostly as privately sponsored students. Well, all right. So I hope yeah. parents are watching closely. And of course, Elizabeth will also come tell us more about the curriculums that you can use, the curricula rather, that you can apply to ensure smooth transition, depending on how you want your child to move in the system. Now, I'm looking at countries that have adopted homeschooling and it's legal and it's working and you guys are not giving me a direct answer so i'm gonna to go to isaac so that we give this final answer from both of you currently as we're speaking there is a body the association that's actually trying to battle their way through legalizing homeschooling at the moment so i'll ask it like a layperson is homeschooling legal in kenya what does it take therefore to legalize homeschooling in kenya i'll start with mr isaac and come to you on the same question see homeschooling as such it's not illegal not illegal what we are lacking in kenya is the legal framework towards homeschooling i can remember there was a case of uh, there was a petitioner who went to court is called uh, gabriel nyabola if I'm, if I'm right and justice majanja by then gave a clear reason that since we are transitioning to the new constitution and there was a right the, the article 43 provides for the right to basic education mm -hmm. justice majanja gave a clear indication that the the in his ruling that the right to education the government should do it progressively progressively mm -hmm. and we are seeing what what you are seeing so far in implementing that uh, judgment the, the government has so far tried you can see like now the secondary education, day secondary education is absolutely free. Uh, the government has expanded TVETs, uh, technical vocational and training centers. Mm -hmm. You can see actually as at now, the Ministry of Education has a principal secretary in charge of TVETs. All right. So that if after Form 4, there's that, the transition now, you, you can see like uh, in today's dailies, that there were about uh, 1.2 million who sat the exams. Around 600 have already been absorbed, uh, uh, absorbed to the, the training institutions and the private and government institutions. You can see the numbers increased. During our days, we, we could only qualify like 100 or 90,000. The numbers has increased. Additionally, in implementing that ruling. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the government is funding private universities. Okay. There are government-sponsored students in universities who are being placed to private institutions. So, basically, with the homeschooling, it's just the legal framework. There's nothing illegal in it. If my son is doing homeschooling and the teacher is accredited, is registered. He has a TSC number and everything. It is just to prove to court. Okay. But to avoid all this process whereby you see the once the police wants to arrest you there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. To avoid all this process is to have a proper legal framework guiding homeschooling. All right. Thank you very much for your sentiments Mr. Isaac Okinyo. Let me have your sentiments mm -hmm. Dr. Elvis Abenga on the same as we close. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just be very frank. Homeschooling yes. is very legal uh, in Kenya. What, as my learned colleague has said, we are lacking is a proper f structure, a proper uh, way of, the, of doing that. Okay. And when I say homeschooling is legal, it is legal only if it is done in the proper way. If it is done using a person who is licensed by the Teacher Service Commission, using an accredited curriculum. 
So that's, uh, if I was to answer that specifically, that is what I'd answer. And you've mentioned about the Homeschooling Association. Yes. We're in court trying to get, what we're in court trying to do is not to get the government to say, or the court to say that homeschooling is legal or illegal, because it is already legal. Mm -hmm. okay. What we are trying to do is to compel the government to set up those structures okay. that are needed to actually actualize homeschooling. And lastly, you know, in the Children's Act, Section 4 says that in any determination by any judicial body or administrative body, the best interest of the child is usually of paramount consideration. So even when we are talking about determination on homeschooling or what have you, all that is asked at that point, is this the best for the child? If you can answer yes to that, then you're in the safe. Wow, thank you very much. And I wish we would, you know, go on and on and on on this particular topic. Allow me to close. Uh, these are ha um, advocates of the High Court of Kenya. Uh, Mr. Isaac Okino on my far, you know, right. Uh, working, uh, of course, practicing with Okinio and co-advocates, and of course, uh, Dr. Elvis Abanga here also with the Bengis. Uh, and, and of course, I'm so glad that you've tried to shed as much light as you can. You didn't use the very tough words on us. Thank you very much. We would have been going, pardon us, but thank you very much for being lenient on the morning show as well. Before I get your final words, I'd just like to, of course, read some uh, feedback here. And we have Kenyans watching, including uh, Boneface Otieno. We have uh, Mwenda Ausi Grafa is saying as watching from Kibuka Chuka, Karen Blessing, good morning, uh, saying Monday Gang is here and eagerly waiting for the homeschooling conversation. I hope you have been educated. Kari Eshiko, good morning, Anki Doris and Bart, very educated panel from the newspaper review to the first lot of your guests. Good way to kick start my day watching from, okay that place that you have written that could give me a bit of uh, trouble but thank you so much for staying with us and angel caden as well thank you so much for watching from ruaka now um i know that you guys are very precise when i tell you to give you final words this has nothing to do with my question uh, to you it's just what you want to say to the public as a high as an advocate of the high court of kenya and as a person you have a minute each i'll start with um is there, should i start with you dr bengi dr abenga and then to isaac Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll just uh, tell I'll just tell the public whoever's watching this. Uh, we, as a country, are going to go into an election period. Let us maintain calm. Let us love our country. Let's love our neighbors, and we will be able to get through to this. And let's just uh, do what is in the best interest for our children N in everything that we do know that our actions will affect the future generation. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah, in my closing remarks, I'd just like to appreciate uh, the young team that I've found, I found here. It's really quite inspiring considering a country that uh, uh, the unemployment rate is around 20%. Uh, a young, hardworking team here. I'm really inspired. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's it. That's how I close my first lounge. And thank you very much for, of course, being part of this conversation and appreciating our advocates on set. Be sure to engage more with the legal fraternity just to know your rights. And you never know. The world needs you to know your rights because you might protect your next brother in a situation where they know nothing about what's going on in the country. That's it. My name is Anki Doris Umbat. And coming after this very short breather is a lady who decided, you know what, if the norm is going that way, I'm going to embrace my culture, do my music in my mother tongue, embrace everything that comes with it, and still be perfectly amazing in the music industry. CR is gracing the studio in just but a bit. Good morning.